so now that we know what we need for our configuration, let's start off with our router R1. We're first going to update our import export RT for the VRC one. So here on the R1 currently, let's do a show run real quick. We have a route target, the same south route target for import and export. We said we're going to need to change that. So first, let's get rid of the route target 100, 100. We know we're going to need that for the export, okay, for the hubs to learn. And then we're going to have to import what the hub is exporting, which is the route target value of 100 colon 101. Okay, next we're going to create a second VLAN that we're going to use between R2 and R7. And first we need to modify our switch here in the middle, which is our switch one that we are using to provide layer two connectivity. So let's get on to our switch one. See if we do show CDP neighbor. We have our R2 fast 00 connects to the switch port fast 02. And then for R7, we have it's on fast 07. Okay, so if we need to create VLAN 72, just not going to worry about the name. And we're just going to default the port that's involved, it's fast 02. And fast 07. Configuring from scratch. Since those ports now going to be carrying two VLANs, here we're just going to have one physical port on so uh, being used on R2 and R7, but we're going to be doing a sub interface between them. So we need to create those switch port to be a dot one Q trunk. So we do switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q and then switch port mode trunk. Okay, and we just want the trunk to only carry two VLANs, which is 27 and 72. Okay, and we can also do port fast trunk on the switch port as well. Okay, so now R2 and R7 should have layer two connectivity. Now we're gonna hop onto R2 and start a configuration. So here on R2, currently we have a VRFC one the legacy VRF that we no longer need since we're going to be creating two brand new VRF on those. So we can do no IP VRF C1 and then create the first new VRF, which is C1 underscore two hub. And we said our distinguisher to, uh, for that is the new one, 100 colon four. And then the route target export only since we're going to use this one to export routes or advertise route to the remote site, which is a spoke sites. And that has to be tagged with 100, 101. Okay, next we create a second VRF, which is C1 to spoke. And we set the route distinguisher of this particular VRF. Doesn't really matter since we are not doing a route target export. We're just gonna use it to learn the spoke sites route. So all we need is to import the route target that the routes from the spokes are being tagged with, which is 100, 100. Okay, now currently router R2 fast 00 had this IP removed since we delete the VRF C1 that was that the interface was associated with. So now that's just to be safe, default the interface fast 00, start from scratch. Do a no shut and then create our sub interface first for our VLAN 27. Do encapsulation dot one Q 27 to make it attack traffic. And then the sub interface dot 27 is going to be used for our C1 2 hub BRF. So this will be C1 2 hub IP address 172.16.27.2. And then we take care of the other sub interface that we need, dot 72, encapsulation dot 1Q, 72, IP VRF. This one's gonna be associated with the other VR, which is C1 two spoke, IP address 172.16.72.2. All right, 
Okay, so those are the physical interface. Next, we're going to configure the BGP. If I haven't mentioned already, there's going to be two separate BGP sessions, one across the VLAN 27 and one across VLAN 72. One is being used to learn all the routes by R7. The other one is being used for advertising route by R7. Okay, so getting under router BGP, since we're on R2, is going to be AS100. And we get under the IPv4 address family, VRFC1 to hub, and then our neighbor. It's going to be 172.16.27.7, which is the IP that we're going to configure on R7. With the remote AS of 65124. Okay, since we are reusing the same AS on all the sites, we're going to do AS override on that. And there's one more command that we need to do. Since the route that R7s are learning from R2 is going to be advertising right back to R2, R2 is going to be seeing its own AS in the AS path. So by default, it will drop any routes that's tagged with its own AS. So in order for us to allow R2 to learn those routes, we're going to need a command called allow AS in. And we need to make sure that we are allowing two instances because as the route comes in, we have the AS override configured. So there will be at least two instances of its own AS shown up in the AS path. So we need to allow two instances. And you will see all this when we do the show command a little bit later. And then we need to activate the neighbor. Okay, moving along to our VRFC1 to spoke neighbor 1672.7, which is our second VLAN, same AS number 65124, and then let me just up arrow, do AS overwrite, and for this particular VRF we do not need to allow AS in since we R2 is not going to be learning anything from R7 across this particular BGP session, so we don't need that command, and then we just activate. Okay, so here are the two sessions just configured, and now we have to complete the configuration on the other side, which is on R7. Let's take a look at R7. Here's our fast zero zero. We still have the OIPs on there, so let's default the interface as well. Do no shot on that, and then sub interface twenty seven. Encapsulation.1Q27, 1627 .7. and then FAST00, 7.72, Encapsulation.72, 1672.7. Okay, let's see if we can ping those two IP on the other side, so first is 27.2, can ping that, the other one is 72.2, and so you can ping that also. So now, continue with our BGP configuration, router BGP 65124, and let's take a look what we have already. I don't think we have that much to configure since a lot of the config is still, uh, still applies from what we have previously. Okay, so we already have the neighbor command for 27. Dot two. We just need one more command, which is next hop cells, to make sure that the next hop IP gets reset to R7 IP. Actually, we might not even need that because it's an EBGP session, but I'm just going to put it on anyway. So next hop self. Then we need to build another uh, BGP session to the new IP 72.2 with the remote AS of 100. Okay, let's give it a second. We show IP BGP summary. You can see that we're not learning anything from 27.2 right now, which we're not supposed to since we're advertising only on that. And then we are learning eight routes already from the 72.2, which is C12 spoked VRF. We do show IP BGP. You can see that currently R7 is learning R6 routes as well as R8 routes from R2. Okay, and now if you do show IP BGP neighbor, 1C216.27.2, 
advertisement and see what we are currently advertising to R2 out of the other session. You can see that all the routes has been learned from R2 has been re-advertised back to R2. Okay, you can see the two instances I was talking about on the AS number 100. Okay, the second one is due to the AS override command that we enter on R2. Okay, so R7 should be all set. Now if we're going back to R2 with the show IP, BGP, VP, and default all. And looking at the BRF C12 hub, you can see that the R2 is learning all the spokes routes now, which is R6 route and R8 routes through 27.7, which is R7. Okay, you can see that the ASN 65.24 got prepended to the AS path as well for those routes. Okay, now if you do show IP, BGP, VP, and V4, all 6600. Let's take a look at how the R2 is seeing this particular routes or you can see that the the route down below right here has the RT of uh, 100 colon 100, which is the route that's being learned from the spoke sites. As you can see that it's coming from a 0 0.1 or R1, and then you just can see a second instance of the routes. Or you can you can pretty much tell by the route distinguisher as well, because we know that the C C1 two spoke has the RD of 100 to 100, and then we have the C1 two hub that is the, with the RD of 100 colon 4 and that particular route which is the route that's being advertised or being learned from R7 and then advertised back to the spoke site has the RT of 100 colon 101 as expected. Now we just show IP, BGP, VP and V4 and then look at the route that's being advertised to a neighbor. First look at R1. Advertise. So these are the routes that the R2 is currently advertising to R1. You see that it's advertising both R6 and R8 routes to R1. So currently all the routes are being learned correctly. Okay, so route from whether it's R6 to uh, from R8 comes in through the C12 spoke. Actually, let me use a different color. So for the route that's coming in from whether it's R6 or R8 comes in through the C12 spoke VRF learned by R7, re-advertise it back by R7 back to R2 and then R2 sends it out to the spoke sites. Okay, so that should be what we're seeing. So now if we go to R6 and then do a show IP BGP, you can see that R6 is currently learning routes to R7 and R8. So if you ping 7701, which is R7 loop back 10, so it's from is on loop back 10, you can see that's pingable. And we can also try a ping to R8. You can see that's pingable as well, but if you do a trace route 8801 sourcing from loop back 10, you can see that currently R6 doesn't really go through R7, but instead it goes directly to R8. And that's basically because of the fact that the both site 1 and 2 are connected to the same PE router and they're sharing the same VRF, so the route gets exchanged between these two sites directly. Okay, and the way to overcome this is to separate out site 2 into a different VRF on R1. And this is what or where we need our second sets of parameter right here for site 2. And this is just to separate the VRF routing table between the two sites and essentially force the traffic between the two sites to go through the hub. So what we're going to do is to create a new VRF named C1 site 2. Let me grab that and we're going to call it C1 site 2. This is going to be for site 2 for customer C1. And then since we can't using the same route distinguisher between the different VRF and the same router, we're going to have to come up with a new route distinguisher for this. So the RD is going to be 300, 300. And the route target import and export can stay pretty much the same. As you can see that any route that's being exported by site 2, which is tag with a RT of 100, 100 would not be imported by site 1 because site 1 is only importing a route target or routes with route target of 100, 101. And for configuration, it's going to be done on R1. So let's hop on to R1. Then first, let's do a show IP, BGP, VPN, V4, all, which I think we did already. You can see that R1 points directly to 
R6 for R6 loopback and then R8 for R8 loopback. Okay, so now what we're going to do is to create a new VRF, just say P VRF C1 site 2 uh, D 300 300. And for the route target, we're going to use the same export 100 100 and then route target import 100 101. Okay, and then we have to reconfigure the interface connecting to our 8, which is currently has that IP. So fast 00, uh, 01 rather, dot 18 IP VRF forwarding C1 site 2, then IP address 18.1 slash 24. Okay, and then we have to reconfigure the BGP for the site. So let's do a show run and see what we have right now. Okay, so under the address family IPv4 VRF C1, we still have the old config for that. So do router BGP 100. So we need to remove that from the VRF C1. So let's take away that as well as the neighbor. And then we get into the Address file me at pv4 vrf c1 site 2. You're going to re enter that. And then all of these command for the peer. And we already have it activated. Okay, you can see that it comes back up already, but this time it's under vrf c1 site 2. So we just, if you do a show IP, vgp, vp, and v4 all now, you can see that under the c1 site 2, which is going to be from the uh, router R8. It's pointing to R2 for the R6 loopback addresses, as well as the under the C1, it's also pointing to R2 for R8 loopback addresses. Okay, so just to prove all this, we can go to R6 and do another trace route. Looks like it's still going directly, let's see why. Do I miss something on the R1 VRF config? So do a show IP VRF. Looks like we still have the, yep, there will be a problem right there. So somehow R1 is still on the VRC1 is still importing route target 100, 100. Not sure how we missed that. So let's remove that. And I guess that's why we saw a two different next top for that. One is to R2 and once directly to R8. This is due to that import that we just removed. So hopefully that should fix it. The show IP BGP looks like still not going away. Let's see why. So clear IP BGP uh, real quick on R1. Okay, so you can see that currently the under the VRF C1, it's only learning the R8 loopback addresses from R2, so that should fix it. So again, let's do a trace routes. You can see this time it went from R1 to R3, R5, 2, 7. Once it hits 7, it comes right back to 2, 4, 3, 1, 8. Okay, so you can see that the traffic from R6 to R8 is currently traversing the hub router 7. So now if we do the same thing from R8, the trace of 6601, sourcing from 8801, and the R8 also passes through their hop before it gets to R6. Okay, so that's how you use the combination of route target import export and multiple VRF to kind of accomplish a hop and spoke topology in MPLS VPN. And that completes our task number one.